emergency services. I'm calling you from the Shidik Arena. The vice president is being held hostage in the owner's box. And they've got my daughter too. What is your objective? One billion seven hundred million dollars. Welcome to Second Class Cinema, the show where we watch a B movie and immediately discuss it. I'm Tom. I'm here with Brittany and Eric today. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Rare morning <laughs> record. It is. It's an early morning edition of Second Class Cinema, the show where we watch a B movie and immediately discuss. Hey, happy birthday, Tom. Hey, it is my birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Don't do that. We don't, we don't own that. <laughs> to happy Cinco de Mayo birthday. It's Cinco to, de Mayo. To <laughs> to, uh, no, you can't even use the chord progression. That's what they're all about. But yeah, it's my birthday. Happy birthday to me. Uh, also, we're Podbean's Podcast of the Week, and that is a very good thing. Podcast of the Week. Blah, 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 blah. Thanks, Podbean. That's very cool, Podbean. I appreciate that. Um, but let's get right down to it. A, <laughs> we watched the movie, 1995, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Sudden Death. We watched the movie 1999. <laughs> we watched from the year Sudden Death, <laughs> starring Sudden Death. Um, but yeah, Sudden Death 1995 movie starring Jean Claude Van Damme. This was Eric's selection, so why don't you take it from here, man? All right. So um, the premise of this movie is the reason I picked it. Um, I, I read like the the plot synopsis, and I was immediately in. Um, essentially, the plot is uh, Jean Claude Van Damme plays uh, Darren McCord, who is an ex firefighter who is going to be working the Civic Center at the final game of the Stanley Cup. He gets uh, two extra tickets as part of his participation, and he brings his two children to watch the game. Um, meanwhile, the vice president is visiting at a private box to watch the game, and uh, he and his party are taken hostage by a crack team of American terrorists uh, in order to extort money from other banks to transfer them into offshore bank accounts that they control. Um, if this plot sounds very familiar, it should because it's basically Die Hard. Um, <laughs> and the reason I, the reason I picked it is uh, twofold. One, Die Hard's been good like twice, and I want to see more Die Hard. Um, I know there were a lot of Die Hard knockoffs in like the late '80s, early '90s, and I've never seen any of them. So I thought this would be a really funny one based on the plot. And the second reason is that everything is like second stakes in this movie, and I thought that was hysterical. <laughs> I feel like um, at some point the guy that was pitching this movie was like, "Okay, we'll get this." Um, the president is at the World Series, and he's played by, uh, there's a cop played by Bruce Willis that has to save him from European terrorists. And the studio is like, no, nah, no, nah, we can't afford to do that. <laughs> so he's like, okay, well, well what about this? Uh, the vice president is visiting the Stanley Cup, and a fireman played by John claude Van Damme has to save him from American terrorists. It's like, okay, we can afford that. Uh, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> it's like a bartering game of fives. It's like, no, that's out. All right, well, Stanley Cup, JCVD. <laughs> Vice President, <laughs> literally, domestic terrorists. <laughs> literally everything is second tier of Argentina. Just knock it down across the board. <laughs> which is really charming, I think. Which is it's oh, yeah. cool because you don't really see a lot of danger in, with those characters and those situations. Right. Like when was the last time you saw a fireman or the vice president like as like the central focus of an action movie? It's never the case. Yeah, they never get there. It's always the, the police officer. And it's always the president. <laughs> <laughs> At the true. very least. <laughs> Um, so let's dive right into successes then. What do, we, what do you say? Let's start with what the movie did correctly. Um, there's a lot of fun, inventive fight scenes, which is exactly what I would expect from a John claude Van Damme movie. He, Very um, true. He, he ices people in some pretty imaginable, uh, imaginative ways. Um, I think I, I have a short list. He kills a guy with a chicken bone. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he snaps a chicken bone in half and stabs a guy in the neck. Yes. Well, there's a, there's a great kitchen fight scene. Like, yeah, entire kitchen fight. Two kitchen fight two scenes. Two kitchen yeah. fight scenes. Which I feel like is a pretty good place to have a fight scene in general. Because oh, there's yeah. just so much danger. And there's so much about. at your disposal. Mm -hmm. Like, he gets threatened by, like, a meat tenderizer and, like, a deep fat fryer and an oven and a stove and all sorts of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, he's fighting a person in a giant penguin costume while this is happening. We should probably mention this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was saving it. that for my favorite part. But. I was too, but that's okay. <laughs> that's it's, it's it's all part of the same same success. It's true. Mm. 
Uh, he he takes out a guy by filling a super soaker with gasoline and lighting him on fire. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's like a, it's like a little super soaker, They're like in the little packages that would come in like a three pack of super soakers, yes, like the the non name brand super soaker. Yeah, and and I absolutely just love the name super soaker. <laughs> it's just the coolest. He makes like a projectile gun out of like a fire extinguisher. Yeah, and, and like and a, like a PVC pipe and pneumatic tubing. Like yeah, yeah. and it's pretty inventive. I don't even know what he put in it that like shot out. I have no idea. It was like a thumbtack, but like a hundred times larger. <laughs> I don't know where he got it or what it was. Obviously from a giant corkboard. Yes, very clearly. <laughs> that actually goes hand in hand with one of my failures of this movie, but I'll save it till we get there. Uh, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. I think the overall production value of this movie was uh, pretty high. Totally. And it made everything look good and quasi-believable. Yeah. I mean, it, it did what 90... It, 90s put a lot of time and effort and budget into action sequences they're like oh this is what people want yep. they want explosions and gunshots and fights and this movie knew what it was trying to do and did that very well we got man on fire oh we got several men on fire a couple of them yeah you know that's that is very very crucial here at second class cinema that we see <laughs> man on fire. uh always a positive note when we see people on fire <laughs> We're sociopaths, aren't we? <laughs> Slightly. <laughs> but, like a public service announcement. <laughs> but they're okay. But yeah, I would say that's totally a success. Production value is very high. Yeah. Everyone knew what they were doing. And actually, on, on that note of production values being very high, uh, the director of this movie, uh, Peter Himes, not only was he the director of this movie, but he was the director of photography for this movie, um, which means he had complete control over the look and the feel of this movie, mm. as well as having to do all the things like blocking and, and talent and all that stuff. So he had his hands full with this movie. Yeah, he did double duty, and it, and it worked, which yeah. I find impressive. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's a crazy amount of knowledge that you'd have to do to do both of those at once for a major for a major movie like this. I mean, it's not this... I mean, I know we say B-movie. It is a B-movie for sure. It's Jean-Claude Van Damme, you know? And then, I mean, Powers Booth was in it. It doesn't mean the cast was a typical B cast, but, I mean, he, he really brought it for it. And, you know, yeah, good people can be in B-movies. Absolutely oh, yeah. they can. Like every Nicolas Cage movie known to man. Like. <laughs> um, I liked the acting in this movie. I thought it was pretty good. Everyone was very convincing. Yeah. yeah. Powers Booth was pretty standard. <clears throat> Actually, I wouldn't say this is one of his like better performances or like better movies. He was just like he's just like you know show up, dude, and just be a douche, just I, run with yeah, it. Yeah, I loved that they had his character be a super bad guy. He was uh, really loathsome. Like, yeah, yeah, you hated him like right away. Oh yeah, he like didn't pull any punches. He was just shooting people. Like but that kind of bothered me too. I was like, you're using these people as collateral for the money you want, but you're just killing them willy nilly. I don't. <laughs> Killing not, him, William Nil. William, <laughs> it's not exactly the best plan, in my opinion. Um, but I loved the amount yeah. of collateral damage that takes place in '90s movies. Like it's never contained; it's always like spreading like wildfire. Yeah, you're talking about the movie collateral damage. No. Oh, my it bad. came out in the 2000s. Did it? Yes. So it was like 2001 or something. Uh, I don't know. Okay, moving on. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, a lot of people died that didn't need to die. A lot of stuff got destroyed that didn't need to get destroyed, but it was... It was in the budget. <laughs> yeah, it made the movie like, way more fun. Yeah, yeah, the movie was kind of fun. Kind of fun. Kind of fun. It, um, it could have been more fun. And Eric, from what I understand, that uh, this movie was meant to be a almost like a parody action movie when it was first written. Yeah, I, th I think I had I'd read that the first draft was like strictly it, this was an action parody which kind of comes through in some points like the penguin fight i believe was um something that was in the first draft mm. and like the premise of the movie is ludicrous i mean it's it's very silly but the movie takes itself deadly seriously which i feel like is something that's pretty typical of like 90s action movies like i think of face off like face off is a super melodrama but yeah. it's it's so silly and ridiculous um and I feel like this movie probably would have been better suited as like I a straight parody. I take Face Off very seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, man, but I could eat peach for hours. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I feel like this movie's like got that weird tone deafness that a lot of '90s action movies have, and I, I feel like it would have worked better as like a, just a straight like this is a comedic action movie, and we're going to treat it as such. Yeah, I think it would have done. It would have been more fun if they had done that. 
and we actually looked it up because after you said that, it was like, well, that's interesting. This movie came out in 95. It, it was supposed to be uh, kind of funny, kind of parody. Mm-hmm. And we looked back, and um, before this movie got made in 95, there were three Naked Gun movies, two Hot Shots movies. Um, uh, Last Action Hero had just previously tanked. Last Action Hero via 93 previously tanked and i'm not sure about the successes of all those other movies but maybe i'm sure like robin hood men in tights stuff robin like hood men in tights was 93 yeah so this was the age of the parody movie so i bet you first draft they were, they were just like oh we're just gonna keep doing some of the same mm-hmm. and then all those movies maybe didn't do as good as they had hoped so last right. action hero didn't i don't think it made its money back mm-hmm. so they were like oh okay we gotta make this serious actually let's make our bad guy really really bad <laughs> and then that'll just solve it uh i felt like it, it was uh halfway one direction halfway in the other so it kind of felt a little weird but it was a little weird like you have powers booth offering a seven-year-old girl cigarettes or like a glass of wine because he tells her that that's what you do to people before you're gonna kill them yeah it's customary <laughs> to offer these uh vices i actually thought that was a really cool line. that was a good line yeah, yeah. i like that um i, I kind of like his character in that way yeah he's kind of were... eloquent yeah, I mean, I, I don't... Do, do you guys have any other successes? Because I feel like maybe I, that straddles the line between success and failure for me. No, nah, I was kind of just waiting. Um, <laughs> so some of the... I mean, in the very beginning of the movie, what I thought they did really well was they kept it very high level. Mm-hmm. So they introduce Jean-Claude and his family situation, which is typical 1995 Mrs. Doubtfire situation. <laughs> he is not allowed to see his children. The wife's a bitch. You can't just show up on your child's birthday and try to take them to Game 7 of the Stanley Cup because oh, you're no. the the worst dad on planet earth you didn't tell us you were gonna do that so sorry we're nope. taking them out to dinner me can't my, take them to the stanley cup i'm the worst per- mom ever <laughs> me and my perpetually balding husband are going to olive garden so yeah uh, all right <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah and so it kept it very high level and it just moved through a bunch of stuff like the countdown the, yeah, exactly the countdown to face off not the movie. <laughs> the actual in the in the Stanley Cup, they started at four hours and they were down to about twenty minutes and about five minutes. Yeah. So they're just <laughs> like this action, this action, this action. And they were teeing it up and they were moving through it and you're like, okay, this movie's working with some pace. Yeah, they um, they kept the setup nice and compact. Yeah. And but then they, I feel like they didn't follow through with that because throughout the movie I feel like there's so many things that they could have done away with that would have just made it I can't like, urgent. Word. Like like yes. tight that too I, I think, more effective I essentially think, like yeah. there's a lot of things that didn't really have a lot to do with what was going on and mm-hmm. if they did it felt like they were kind of just like wedged in there and this movie was uh, an hour and 50 minutes and it did not need anything else wedged in there they, yeah. they could have very easily sliced out some side plots and it would have been the same movie <laughs> yeah <laughs> like his entire son <laughs> he is completely redundant character <laughs> well, before because we were very very we were transitioning to failures um very nicely i must say but i just want to squeeze in one more success okay that the like the log line of this movie was terror goes into overtime <laughs> <laughs> and that was fucking perfect yes that is a great <laughs> like it, there is not a word in there that doesn't need to be in there it's just they're in and out and they give you exactly it's perfect that tagline isn't an hour and 50 minutes long yeah <laughs> um so i just wanted to squeeze that in there so yes oh, um failures i do have one more success oh okay uh this movie's got some pretty good one-liners or at least it throws a lot of one-liners on the screen without really knowing if they're good or not which I can appreciate because that's kind of what 90s action movies are supposed to do. <laughs> uh, do we have any examples? Do we, do we, um, do we yeah. get any? So um, the, the premise of, of the movie, uh, the, the start of it, basically, the way the, the terrorists get access to the vice president's box is that they hold um, the main chef's wife hostage um, and they manage to convince, like, they manage to coerce the, the chef in or giving him access to the vice president's uh, private booth. Um, and the goon that visits the um, the wife of the chef, uh, like, asks her for cookies, which <laughs> seemed very strange to me. But um, he follows her to the pantry, and she's like, wait, wait, hold on, slow down, slow down. You know, I got to be safe here. And she's like, I, I keep my machine gun with the produce, <laughs> which I think is a great one-liner for just, like, a random civilian to have. That'd as, be great. I wrote that down under favorite parts as well, as she, like, <laughs> hands him a package of fig newtons. Fig newtons. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but that the, was kind of a gripe I had that most of the one-liners didn't come from the people that they should have come from. Mm-hmm. Like Van Dam didn't have any. No, he. If he had did, anything. I don't remember them because they were not spectacular. Yeah. Powers Booth didn't really have any one-liners. No. I mean, he had some like bad guy banter, but like, yeah, all the one-liners came from like these like just random subsequent people. random characters. I think another one. Uh, the the chef was talking to um, the the goon on the phone, 
and he was like, if you hurt my wife, I'll, and then he gets cut off and the guy just goes, what do you burn my toast? That's another, <laughs> like, <laughs> slam. Uh, that was a total slam. I actually had that in, in uh, successes, but do you think that's, um, that was some stuff left over from the first draft? I think it might've been because, because those, that's funny. those are funny lines and they don't fit really in the tone of this movie. It's they, weird. Yeah. Like I didn't know. Cause because Powers Booth was so bad. I don't even know his name in this movie. I don't think they ever mention his name in the either. movie. I, I think he's just up. Powers Booth. <laughs> um, his name. I have so many questions about Josh, him. Joshua uh, Foss. Ugh. That is terrible, man. Never heard that name once in the movie, no, yeah, but okay. Yeah. Uh, I have so many questions about his character and their plan. <laughs> oh, okay. So let's, let's pick this moment to transition to official failures. And let's start <laughs> with... Powers Booth and his plan. So <laughs> ask your questions. Eric and I will try our best. Um, what is their motivation? Money. Yeah. That's it. I think I think Powers Booth's character, and I, I know we were kind of like fading in and out at that point. I think he was like a Secret Service member, and he just wanted money, and he had an in because he was privy to like how the Secret Service would operate and how he could like get access to the Vice President. Okay. Yeah. I think that was his motivation. He just wanted a make a ton of cash and just get the fuck out. He was Hans Grubering it basically. Okay, cuz I uh, so I ha- okay, no, go keep going. <laughs> cuz I keep going back <laughs> to the rock on this like that is the penultimate action movie for me for oh, some I, reason, okay. which only came out a year later, by um, the way. Um, but yeah, like that in in that Ed Harris has like legitimate gripes that he is dealing with as the main villain and he wants like this money and he has reasons behind it mm-hmm. and actual motivation motivation and logic and i just felt like this was so empty in that sense yeah he's just like a bad guy like i was like i don't i can't even like really root against him because i don't know what his deal is yeah like you just want money that's so yeah. weak to me like i i find they kind of missed the mark where hans gruber is kind of an entertaining villain where it's like okay you kind of think he's a terrorist at first and he's got like these these motivations to release these guys that are in other terror cells and then it turns out he just wants the money but in the meantime he's like had a, a some hilarious one-liners he's he's been kind of like a cool guy to like you kind of like him as a villain. Yeah. Harris Booth doesn't do anything to make you like him, really. I don't no, know. He's, he's not just, charming. He's not charming. He tries to be. The movie tries to set him up as being a Hans Gruber charming style villain. Yeah. But he's not. He's not a charming rogue. He's just kind of a dick. Yeah. I wonder if it has to do with anything culturally also. Maybe. Because when you see like someone from Germany or like the Ukraine or something as a villain in a movie, you're like, all right, you're a terrorist. I get it. <laughs> that's all the motivation i need but when it's like an american and they're like i have zero motivator for this i just want this money you're like what's your point you're a dick yeah Yeah. like why well i mean isn't that uh i mean it kind of makes sense if that's how you're gonna explain it yeah i mean it's it's a motivation but it feels thin i guess yeah i mean it just felt like he got more pleasure from killing the hostages rather than using them for leverage to get what he wanted Mm -hmm. so i was like is this like a win-win for him like if he gets the money and he gets to kill people is that what he's here for um, my other question was, where did like the money come from? Like in other movies, it's like, mm. oh, we know you have all this money because you're doing like X, Y, Z. So transfer that to us. But he was just like, oh, like make it appear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know where it's you've got from. one billion <laughs> seven hundred million dollars. I want it all. <laughs> the price was so abstract too. Right, that's a ludicrous amount of money. Like for ninety <laughs> five, one yeah. billion seven hundred million. I cracked the fuck up. Dude, when he said we that. saw that in the trailer and we started dying. Like, well, like why couldn't he say like one point seven billion? <laughs> I was yeah, like, no, is that your that. legitimate denomination? Is that what you're going to stick with? All right. Like, it should have been down to the cent. He should have said it down to the cent. Because, <laughs> because then that would have been like, oh, okay, he's a detail guy. He knows exactly how, like, you know, that would have added to his character if he had known that. But he's right. just like, oh, $1 billion, $700 million for me like, and all my accounts. <laughs> it sounded like he made that that number up. Like, he's Dr. Evil or some shit. Like, <laughs> One billion, <laughs> seven million. Um, that's really the last quest- question I have okay. about Powers Booth. Um, but I, I mean, if we're going to stay on I his... do have some direct other failures, but if you have anything I have, to add I'm gonna to that. I'm going to continue with this, yeah. Um, that I thought that his plan, uh, which was to, if I'm uh, mistaken here, was to hijack the booth that the vice president was in, and then to... Uh, expect a certain amount of money transferred from this government account to his offshore accounts every period. Mm-hmm. Yes, of the game. Of the game. So if by the end of the period he didn't have a certain denomination, that he'd start killing hostages. That's the fucking worst plan I've it's, ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> and like, it, why is he wielding the Stanley Cup in this fashion? <laughs> 
It well, doesn't make sense. Can't use I mean, hockey to your own sick <laughs> ends. Uh, well, I guess you could get- do like baseball because it's like, oh, I got nine fucking innings. <laughs> that's a little too. That's, what's the what's the sport with the shortest amount of, of denominations of play? Oh, Stanley Cup, obviously. <laughs> yeah, hockey. <laughs> I mean, it, it it comes off of like they were. I mean, I'll, I'll probably go into more detail on this later, but they were obviously this is a big diehard knockoff, and in the plot of Die Hard. Uh, Hans Gruber makes like a bunch of unrealistic demands just to buy time and it makes sense in the the, the plot of that movie and this he's making unrealistic demands but they're demands that he actually wants accomplished so you would think he would like give them time to accomplish these demands exactly like he's expecting to get 500 million dollars transferred to his offshore accounts every 20 minutes yeah that's insanity yeah and he's already killing the hostages so mm-hmm. he's giving them zero incentive to work with him right and the the leverage he has is that he has the vice president that's it. he's just killing people willy-nilly yeah, yeah he killed like the mayor killed the mayor's wife he like killed, you know like, the well, vice president can be replaced <laughs> <laughs> well that's what we actually thought uh, for logic. a little while was that if you kill, if the, you vice kill the vice president, you become the vice president. <laughs> that was his end game, and that was the end game. Um, and well, and also too, it's like from the perspective of the Secret Service or, or whomever is trying to stop Powers Booth from being a bad guy. They know exactly when his plan is up, when the fucking hockey game is over. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, he had I some mean, bombs planted in there, so it's like, okay, well, that'll get what I want. The whole place goes up. But right, like, which means he also blows up, which I think someone points out to him. <laughs> yeah, but does he not care? Did like, he disarm nine out of the ten bombs? I think he did, yes. Uh, There's yes. only one left. There was one left. Yeah, he got to nine out of the ten. <laughs> Listen, 90%, so that's a passing grade. That's an A-. minus. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Jean-Claude gets an A-. minus. <laughs> no, I just meant that was weak for the villain. Oh, yeah. Um... One of my big failures of this movie, well, first I had written that JCVD was hardly in it, Mm -hmm. because for the first half hour when they were going through the countdown to face off, it was like four hours, two hours, 45 minutes, half hour, 10 minutes. Like, he was hardly in it. He was in it for maybe five minutes. Yeah. he. How much have we talked about him during this podcast? It's almost been 20 minutes. Exactly. (laughs) And even when it got into the main plot, like when the game started, you didn't really see him for a little bit. And Mm -hmm. then he popped up. And I was like, why are they doing this? But one of my main gripes was that you're making a movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme, the super muscly, like... (laughs) crazy martial arts dude who's well known for like kicking ass yeah yep. and then you put him into a situation where he just has to like macgyver fucking weapons and bombs to kill people mm. and you see like 15 percent of this movie is him like actually kicking ass yeah yeah that was kind of a disappointment i agree yeah well and i mean this is also the, the same guy who made this is the same guy who made time cop which had a, a lot of that stuff right and so they transferred to this and this, I feel like the script when they made this was just in a very weird state. Yeah. But they were just like, well, we're executing what's on the page. And w- the script didn't maybe know exactly what it was trying to be. And it was adapted by this guy as best he saw. So it had these weird moments of, hey, that's funny. And these weird moments of, uh, this is not funny. This is quite, quite the action movie. Mm-hmm. And maybe it failed a little bit in the edit in that way, too, because you can edit for comedy, even if it's serious subject matter. Oh, yeah. Well, I wonder if they like had planned on him being the star of this movie or if they had already wrote all these like devices where they MacGyver a bunch of weapons, but then they got John claude Van Damme, but then they didn't want to part with all these like, quote unquote, creative mm-hmm. like they were creative. devices they used. Um, but yeah. I feel that like that really fell short for me. Yeah. yeah, I think this movie was originally optioned for Stallone, Schwarzenegger, and Bruce Willis, and they all turned it down. So I think that's why we end up with John Claude Van Damme, who you would expect to be doing some ass kicking, doing all like these Bruce Willisy type things. Not so much kicking ass. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know I'm gl- in my eyes that Jean Claude was actually the best person to fit this role right i don't more think so than any of those other guys you mentioned schwarzenegger would have been weird bruce willis maybe would have done it but he's already been in die hard no he, he didn't this guy write like, die uh direct die hard also no no or, this guy directed uh stay tuned uh that oh, movie yeah, we with john ritter his... and suzanne summers where they go into the tv <laughs> uh and i love that movie that movie is great um he also directed we a should couple... probably do that at some point i love stay tuned that movie's great um but no he did um yeah, Time Cop, The Relic, End of Days, Musketeer. Oh, yeah, that's what we were talking like about. Earlier, we were talking about uh, McTiernan. That's what maybe uh, uh, threw okay. you off a bit, because yeah. that's what he did. We switched back and forth. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> um, I want to throw a failure out here, if I can. Um, towards the end of the movie, 
uh, as Jean Claude is trying to save the day and make the periods last longer so that they have more time to do what they have to do. <laughs> um, he takes on the persona of the injured goalie for yep. the Pittsburgh Penguins. For the Pittsburgh Penguins, which is uh, which is also very quickly they actually used NHL licensed materials here. Yeah. They were in the actual stadium with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, and I was like, well, this is kind of weird. <laughs> I, mean, I know it's a Stanley Cup, but I'm like... Maybe it wasn't as stringent in the 90s to like get actual teams to be in your movie. I mean, well, because it reminded me of like, Major League. So they actually used the Cleveland Indians and in, in, in MLB and all that stuff. So I was like, well, you know, maybe it was riding off that. And especially if it was supposed to be a parody to make that connection right mm-hmm. away. But then in parody movies, it is also fun to kind of make up your own thing. Yeah, true. But, but very quickly, back to what I was saying. Um <laughs> He takes on the persona of the goalie character who who had been injured or who's a coach. I feel like shit. I gotta go. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, this is the fucking seventh game of the Stanley <laughs> Cup, dude, and it's almost over. You're not gonna feel like shit and then leave. I don't care if you have the flu. <laughs> Come on, you're, you're staying in there. You're getting paid. Um, but he uh, takes on the persona of this goalie. Um, and earlier in the movie, I feel like the only the only way they could make sense of this scene. <laughs> Was to <laughs> earlier in the movie to go back in and inject a line where he's like, "Yeah, I used to be a goalie when I played hockey. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I used to be a goalie." Like, okay, it's that's like a one sentence throwaway line, and like, you're like, yeah. "Huh, that's got to come into come into play a little later." There's I feel. no way it won't. Yeah, yeah. And so he's on the he's on the ice, and he's he's the goalie now for the Pittsburgh Penguins because <laughs> it really had nothing to do with the whole scene when he mentioned it. Like nothing. he was just like introducing his kids to the players, and it was like. I used to play. Yeah. Oh, I used to be a goalie. Dude, nobody asked. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, okay, cool, great. Okay, firefighter. Yeah. And so he gets this, it's this weird, like, almost like redemption scene. Like, maybe he let the goal go by in, like, his college years. And now he's, like, trying to, like, okay, now I not do, not only do I have to save my daughter, the vice president, <laughs> everyone in the stadium, but I got to save the Pittsburgh Penguins <laughs> Stanley Cup chances. I feel like that's something that like bled through the parody version of the script. Yes, like that's another thing that I thought carried over. Like him on the ice being the goalie He's, now yeah. and now responsible for the Stanley Cup. Yeah. <laughs> well, is I mean, hysterical. Well, he blocked that shot and he did it he did it successfully. And then they tied up the game. And then they gave them more time. Exactly. Well, no, I, I understand into- why they wrote him in there. <laughs> Wait, just- did they tie up the game before or after he blocked the shot? No, he blocked the shot. They were losing by one. And then they tied up the game to bring it into sort of death. death. Oh, okay. Uh, right at the last second. Got it. <laughs> I'm glad we're on the same page with that one. <laughs> Uh, but that, yeah, that weird, like, re- it was almost like a redemption scene. Like, this is his second chance to save the day, mm-hmm. um, which I guess you could tie into the beginning of the movie, which is why he's an ex-firefighter, was because he wasn't able to save someone from that fire in the beginning of the movie. But then the redemption came through him saving the goal for the Pittsburgh Penguins. <laughs> and then yeah. also, yeah, okay, it's, no. It's funny, because I, I I would love to see that version of this movie where he literally saves the day for everything. <laughs> He's just the best guy around. <laughs> well, are you done with talking about that part? Yes. Because I have something to add on to that. After he blocks the goal and everyone's going wild and cheering, he looks up at his son who's still sitting in the stands. At this point his daughter uh, has already yeah. been his daughter has already been kidnapped by Powers Booth and is in the president's vice book vice president box son is still in the stands he looks up at his son and says i love you in sign language because for some reason they were doing that <laughs> earlier in the movie and the son's like whoa my dad <laughs> and like, dad? like why <laughs> why was that in there it was so dumb if they cut the son out of this movie and it was just uh, the daughter the that's whole time my next biggest gripe that this movie would have been maybe 20 minutes shorter and probably a lot better yeah there were multiple useless plot points in this like unaddressed like the son and the daughter go to watch the game and the dad's like don't move no matter what kids fight daughter leaves gets kidnapped and the son just sits there but then he sits there through every single (laughs) thing that happens he sits there through a bomb going off and any everyone like rampaging out of this place he sits through a helicopter falling (laughs) through the ceiling he sits through everything and then at the end jean-claude van damme finds him and he's like i listened to you dad i didn't move i didn't go anywhere like yeah just like the side plot great Good job. Like, why did that need to happen it was why a, a message for children to listen to their parents I th- 
thought. It, it made me clear. so mad. <laughs> oh, you could have cut that out. Um, you could have cut out the old lady at the beginning getting like kidnapped. No, and, like, I like that. Part I liked a it lot. too, but it just made the movie longer. Like I yeah. feel no. like it was just too long. It, it dragged a up. lot in the middle. No, because that part wasn't in the middle for me. That part was in the very beginning. It was and, like, in the beginning. Yeah, the the old woman and the chef. Yeah. combination like I'm just i thought saying, that, like, that showed how bad the bad guys were no it totally wasn't it showed how their plan went from like point a to point b to point c mm-hmm. but they could have made it like shorter they could have they were like up, all yeah. right this guy's gonna pull up to the curb and start talking to the wife and then you're gonna cut to something else and then you're gonna cut back and he's gonna be inside talking to the wife asking for cookies and then you're gonna cut to something <laughs> else and then you're gonna cut back to them telling her to call this number blah 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 right it's like oh my god just I get on with it would have expected the wife and the chef to last longer in this movie given how much time was spent on them but then they just get disposed of exactly yeah. and that brought me back to my like wow collateral damage of everyone in this movie is <laughs> terrible maybe there was meant to be more jokes in those scenes that have got cut and yeah. then like yeah i think when you try and take something that's a comedy and flip it for action drama that there's it's a weird translation to make and you got to make sure you change everything to make sure it gets to that point because otherwise you're stuck in this weird place where this movie was uh, I'm, I have I have another failure. Very quickly, is that people did not act like actual people in this movie. I feel like that's a problem with a lot of '90s action movies. Like, but I agree. No one acted like a normal human being would act. When every so you know this goon falls on top <laughs> of the um like the the video thing on top of the rink where you see all the highlights and the you know you know and the score about? and all that yeah yeah, yeah that thing uh, a goon falls on that and it explodes and. <laughs> and everyone's running out of the stadium and everyone's panicking and leaving except for his son who is sitting there and no one <laughs> is trying to be like, hey, come with me, little boy who's yeah. clearly by himself. <laughs> I'll help save you. <laughs> everyone's like, peace. Like, no one? No yeah. one? Or like, no one. <laughs> so how many fans did they say were in there? Like 17,000? Yeah. A lot of people. <laughs> yeah. 17,000 people looked at that kid and said, nah. Nah, fuck him. Fuck it. Well, I can, or, I can actually believe that. I can't. That somebody wouldn't pay attention to that in a disaster it's, scenario. It, but the, the, it is possible that everyone would be like, well, someone else will deal with it. Yeah, but, or the, like that kid obviously didn't walk into the stadium by himself. But dude, the fact that he's sitting there just sitting and looking around just... Like aimlessly looking, and then, <laughs> and then everyone's gone, and then this, like this empty seats everywhere. <laughs> everyone's in the aisles, and this kid's just still sitting there. Oh There's no way someone he was stupid, and he should have died. <laughs> All yeah, he should have died. That little girl ruled, though. I loved her. Little girl was great. <laughs> my, Daughter was great. My dad's a boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, little girl was fantastic, but I mean, I guess she was a success. Is there anything else? Um. I find that this movie fails a lot in the fact that it is so derivative of Die Hard and it doesn't know why it does things sometimes. Yeah. Like, um, I have a big list of, like, pretty much everything this does, and I probably missed a ton of things. Um, But my biggest gripe is that, okay, so this Darren McCoy character, John claude Van Damme, is an ex-firefighter. So, I mean, he does a couple of things that are, like, firefighter-ish. Like, he understands how to hook up, like, a, like improvise a pneumatic tube to, like, make a dark gun. I can imagine a firefighter would know how to do that. Out of an ex- fire extinguisher. Right, exactly. <laughs> or, like, he, exactly. he, he finds, like some, like, some some chemical, like, some cleaning chemicals, and he makes a bomb out of it. Okay, yeah, firemen would probably know how to do that. Fire science classes, you know. But then there's other things where it's like, okay, well, how does he know how to shoot a machine gun, like, accurately? How or does like, he know how to disarm a fucking C4 bomb? Right. Is like, what I want to know. I, he's, 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 dude, fire department, not bomb squad. He's, he's not bomb squad, totally yeah. different things. I'll say he, he really... I I mean, when he was d- disarming that first bomb, though, he didn't know, and he just had a knife, and he was like, he's just, just like staring, like, "Fuck, I'll cut uh, <laughs> this one," and then, and then he's like, that, "Well, that didn't kill me. Let me <laughs> cut this other one." But yeah, then he's also a John Claude Van Damme ass kicker, which is a good thing about this movie. But on the other hand, why is he an ass kicker? He's a firefighter. It yeah. doesn't make sense. Yeah. I expect a cop to be an ass kicker. They weren't like, oh, he's like ex-military. And yeah, now he's a firefighter. Like that, I would have been like, all right, fine. That's all. That's like. A two second drop in mm-hmm. to like make this logical, and I would have <laughs> yeah. just ate it up. I would have been yeah, like, okay, okay, fine. And they did that with so many other parts, like him being a fucking goalie, but yep. they didn't do it for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I feel like that's another thing that hit the like the the editing room floor. Like, yeah, when this could have been, yeah. been a parody, and then it's like, well, he was also ex military, and he was also a firefighter, and he's like a black belt in five martial arts. Like that would have been hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> but I mean, this always I always use this as a defense for movies, and it's it's one of my favorite defense. 
things is that they're not going to make the movie about the guy who didn't save the Stanley Cup. Yes. They're going to make the movie about the guy who did. And was and, awesome and, doing it. And it does, yeah, and looks awesome doing it. They, they don't yeah. care. They, they want to make the movie about the winner, yeah. which, is, which is Hollywood in the 90s especially. Let's make the movie about the guy who saves the Stanley Cup and all the people in the stadium. It was sure. just so unbelievable, though. I mean, yeah, yeah from, like the, from the get-go. He scales the dome of this giant ice arena oh, and yeah. like, <laughs> with a grappling hook. With which, a grappling where hook did he like, get it? I'm sure he found it. Did he it. make it? <laughs> I think we didn't yeah. see that. Yeah, yeah, maybe we missed that Something part. maybe that got cut out of the editing, yeah. Um, he just he has one. Don't worry about it. He like leaps from that scoreboard, like from the top of the scoreboard, like to this crazy hanging thing. Slides all the way from the ceiling of the dome and like throws <laughs> a bomb on top of the vice president's yeah. private. Like that's a total. He goes from like the jumbotron like scoreboard yeah. to like a dolly, I think, for a camera. Yes, and it's like on like cables, and then swings off of that onto a lamp. And then swings into the president's box. And here's the thing I find crazy about that. Like, I think, like, comparing this to Die Hard again. Like, that's a total John McClane move. But the thing is, John McClane <laughs> would be shitting his pants while doing that. <laughs> Darren McCord, like, that's, this is everyday routine for him. Cool. <laughs> yeah, like, that should not be a normal event for anybody. And, it, like, in the good Die Hard movies, John McClane is never confident about doing that kind of shit. Yeah. Well, and, and it's weird that he even threw the bomb at that, like, box because the uh, a the vice president was in there <laughs> b his fucking daughter was in there and he's right. just like oh fuck it <laughs> <laughs> ah that'll be fine also i thought it was strange that there were just tools and Everywhere. things like that lying around for yeah. him to like have at his disposal there was like a whole shop with like vices and like drills mm-hmm. and saws i'm like why is this in an arena where hockey games are they were making the hockey players like i understand <laughs> was like under construction but that wasn't the case it was just like this cement room with all mm-hmm. these tools again it's yeah. it's like a diehard knockoff where they didn't think about the logistics of why diehard worked that way and then nakatomi <laughs> plaza was under construction exactly yeah. and then he's building this bomb and he's like pouring stuff into like giant glass like mason jars i'm like yeah i totally see mason jars <laughs> just lying around at hockey games <laughs> well it's all the moonshine well, oh well i was gonna say i mean he was in the kitchen for a lot so, so unbelievable so but unbelievable. I think I think that scene we just talked about where he's like on the jumbotron, fly to the camera, jump off to it should be the new uh course one for American Ninja Warrior <laughs> <laughs> because that looked like really hard. It, it, it you was have to really make cool. your own bomb and then hope it doesn't explode while it's attached to your belt. Yeah, yeah, and I don't get why it didn't explode while he was like jumping and running and I, shaking it up and I then answer that. Okay, no. Because he kept. Did the smaller jar have a lid on it? Yes, it did. Okay. Yeah. So when he threw it, it broke. The whole thing. It was like a big. It was a Jaeger bomb bomb. Got it. Got it. Okay. Smaller jar inside a larger jar, two different contents. So when it broke, it exploded. Got it. Ah, very nice move. Very nice. Yeah. I understand. It was a cool sequence. Classy Van Damme. Yeah, no, I buy it. Very cool sequence, but it just makes no sense in the context of the character that we're presented with. All right. I do have one more failure, and this is a small gripe. All right. Um,. Every single machine gun in this movie has a silencer on it, <laughs> which yep. I feel like that takes away the impact from gunfights in movies. If you have a reason to do that, that's fine. But I mean, you know, once a year I watch Die Hard. <laughs> if you're John Wick, it's fine. Exactly. But like, OK, well, once a year I watch Die Hard and I crank the subwoofers up as loud as I can before I start pissing off the neighbors. And like the the, the shooting scenes in that movie are so like thuddy and impacty and like it really gets you going. And if you saw that movie in the theaters back in 1987 or eight. It would have been incredible. And in this, like, the, the gunfights are all muted and have, like, no impact whatsoever. Yeah. That's yeah. It. So, I don't know. Maybe it was, like, a, a maybe there was a trend going on at the time where that was something happening. But I felt like it took a lot of impact out of the gunfights. Well, I think the fact that it was, a, I mean... Maybe it was just a logistics thing. Yeah. They yeah. actually thought this one through. And they said, well, let's give all of our main baddies silencers in this box so that no one knows what's going on exactly don't really want to tip anyone off yeah on top of it being a very loud environment they'd definitely be able to get away with silencers up there but then on the other hand the logistics of this movie make no sense to begin with (laughs) they they thought one thing through like you're gonna pay attention to that but not (laughs) every other glaring like inaccuracy me and audience want to hear bang (laughs) (laughs) um all right so let's move on to favorite parts then favorite Uh, parts uh we do have one collective favorite part i think Penguin? Um, yeah, the yeah. penguin mascot <laughs> fight scene in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> someone take it away. I'm not even sure if I'm ready to explain this thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really sure how it sets up. I know that um, the well, penguin, the mascot, kills someone in the lady's bathroom. Well, the mascot, so let's start. And then kidnaps about, his daughter, brings her to the vice president box. 
I don't remember how him and Let, Van Damme met back up. I'll say, let's start from the beginning of that and say that the mascot was one of his friends in the mm-hmm. beginning and that met his children so that they were comfortable with this mascot. Yes. They were like, oh, it's this lady that's it's icy friends the penguin. With. Yeah, yeah, icy, yay. Oh, we know the icy person. And mm-hmm. then all of a sudden, uh, someone stole that mascot suit, a very bad woman, um, <laughs> which I guess why... the. the only women are mascots or something? I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, that was weird. I didn't know that if was it weird. was the same lady. It was a different lady. It was and, a different lady, But yeah. then there was like a lady in the stall who was dead who she was, was a, wearing a hat. She, yeah, that was a so different person. She was that was a, con- a fan? That was a concessions person, I yeah. thought. Okay, I thought that was a concession so that was collateral person. damage. Collateral damage. <laughs> the collateral <laughs> damage they, is so ridiculous in this movie that we can't follow the plot. <laughs> I don't know who anyone is. Because they saw that it wasn't who it was supposed to be, so mm-hmm. then they had to kill that person, and then the daughter goes in and finds the... the body. Uh, the mascot, and it was like, I see. And then the, the mascot's ignoring her because she doesn't know that that girl actually knows who that mascot is. And then uh, shock, horror, stall opens, dead person falls out, bad things happen. Um, the mascot was about to kill the daughter until a bunch of people came in, and then they had to act inconspicuous. The daughter ran out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then that leads us to the fight scene in the kitchen. Oh, no. Didn't he follow her? He followed the mascot, and he was yeah. like, oh, you were just walking back here with my daughter. Like, oh, that's where right. is so-and-so? And she was like, oh, she got sick, and she had to go home early. Yeah, the elevator. And she was like, I brought your kids up there because they wanted to meet somebody. The vice president. The vice president. Yeah. And, then she, and then he saw his daughter's hat in the elevator and was like, what the fuck, bro? Right. Yeah. 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 And then they started fighting. Yeah, they go to the kitchen and like beat the shit out of each other. It's hilarious watching Jean Claude Van Damme beat up somebody in a mascot uniform. <laughs> like every, I just felt like every hit that landed didn't matter. In effect, the, those mascot things have a lot of padding. Yeah, <laughs> because mascots are expected to be beaten up by little kids. <laughs> uh, I mean, they did a lot of cool stuff in mm-hmm. the kitchen for that fight scene, and it was very funny. Yes, yeah. just because like the look on the penguin's face is so doofy. Like he's got these big <laughs> so like happy looking. <laughs> These big bug eyes and like just this this crazy like happy beak with human eyes coming out of it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and and you know what I thought of as we were watching this. Um, so as the scene kept going and going and going and going, it didn't stop. There was just a lot going on, and they went to all over the kitchen. They were doing this whole thing. It reminded me um, of the, that Family Guy moment yeah. when Peter fights that chicken in front of that store. They just start to get into this like crazy fight, and then it just goes all over the place and it doesn't stop i'm yeah. like i guarantee seth MacFarlane saw sudden death <laughs> and was like i am writing that into my cartoon yeah <laughs> which makes sense because that entire scene is so cartoonish and so ridiculous like fighting over the fry later <laughs> <laughs> yeah fighting over and it was just hilarious and i was like oh that's where he got it oh he from. shook red pepper flakes in her eyes at one point oh like into the bird's mouth yeah. which is where her <laughs> eyes were <laughs> Dude, I, I even wrote down, like, oh, oh, red pepper flakes will help you kill a mascot in a pinch. <laughs> just, to, just so everyone knows. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought that was interesting uh, how that paralleled with Family Guy. I'm pretty sure that has to be where he took it from. Oh, it has yeah, to be. It's got to be. Yeah. I have a note in my notes that says, I hope he fist fights that penguin. And <laughs> that, that delivered. Sure enough. <laughs> um, I thought this was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um in the beginning of the movie when they're singing the national anthem for the game, all this like kind of really bad stuff was happening. So like they're doing this whole national anthem thing, and then that was when the bad guys were taking that moment of, of everyone being focused on that to make it upstairs to kill a couple people to like really wrangle in the vice president. And that was really cool. Yeah. They did a really good job because I like I love contrasting music. It's like my favorite thing in filmmaking and like the fact that this is the national anthem and then we're almost degrading it by showing all these other things happening. Mm. I was like, yeah. very cool. Kind of reminds me of um, Face Off again, where uh, that, that big shootout is happening while somewhere over the rainbow is playing. Yes. Yeah. That's like another great contrast of music. Yeah. That stuff very works cool. really well in the 90s action movie. Uh, totally agree. So anyone else have any favorite parts before we rate? Uh, um, there's a part where, okay, so we've talked about the useless son and how he never leaves his seat. Yes. Oh. There is a, um, there's a turncoat within the Secret Service that is working with the terrorists and he is being sent to <laughs> he's being sent to get the kid. Um, <laughs> Sorry. He's being sent to get the kid to hold him also hostage to, to raise the stakes. And 
the the son's been instructed never to move like don't move ever uh, <laughs> <laughs> never ever again yeah exactly and like this the secret service guy comes up to the kid and he uses every trick in the book to try to get him to go and i feel like this is when like stranger danger was like a big thing like yeah so like this felt very of that but he was like hey uh you know your your dad's in the the private box you should come with me uh we'll, we'll talk about it we'll get some snacks it'll be really good and he's like my my dad told me not to move he's like well Okay, well, get this. I'm with the Secret Service, and yeah. uh, I need to protect you. And he was like, "No, nah, I, 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 I'm a little kid." And the guy was just like, <laughs> "The guy's like, should, damn it, you're a little kid. You should do what you're told." And he's like, "I am." <laughs> I was like, "Yes." I know. And, and the Secret Service guy, I guess I can't argue with that logic. He just like shakes his head and walks away. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing: no one in the stadium was paying attention to this kid. He could have just scooped him up and walked away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we forgot the best line. I'm a child. I'm a child. <laughs> <laughs> that was his logic about why he couldn't go with him. That's the fact. And like, and what do you say to that? You're like, well, no, he's 100 percent correct. He yeah, is no, a child, and I, I just got beat. The facts. It doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Shit. All right, I'll be back for you. All right, I'll come back. <laughs> Foiled me this time. <laughs> I have a favorite part and a favorite part that we were, um, we we were not given, which I find unfortunate. Uh, there is a scene where John Claude after he's wearing the um, the hockey pads, he's dressed up as a goalie. Oh yeah! And there is a part where he gives an awesome like sideways like hook kick to a guy that comes in through the door. And I'm disappointed for this for for two reasons. One, when he kicks the guy, he does not kick him with the hockey skate, which I think would have been a. This is the only movie where you could work that into the script. Yeah. He just regular kicks the guy, which is unfortunate. Missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. Second missed opportunity. He picks up that guy's machine gun. And then he starts taking off his hockey pads. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, you had just missed an opportunity to last match. You just <laughs> missed an opportunity for him to be skating on the ice with a machine gun. <laughs> Why would you not put that into the script? And then he just changes back into his regular, like, tough guy clothes. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> yeah. It was so close, but so, 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 so close. Far. Uh, one, one little side thing, too. Uh, there is a part where the token computer hacker. Um, they cut to him just playing Doom while <laughs> I hated that guy. <laughs> that guy was uh, horrible. Um, I loved when the little girl said her dad was a boss. That was oh one of my favorite parts. I yeah. don't even remember the rest of that just, spiel, but she was just <laughs> in Powers Booth's face, like, like my dad always does what he says he's gonna do. He's a boss. Yeah. <laughs> he's gonna come for me. I was like, whoa, she's so young to be calling her dad a boss. I know. We're like, oh, you got slammed, Powers Booth. <laughs> she was ahead of the curve on the boss thing by yeah. like ten years. I know, yeah. right? She was awesome. Um, and actually, she like talked shit to him every chance she got. Oh, it was so good. She was like, you're mean. Yeah. He it was like, why do you think that is? She was like, maybe when you're born, there's something wrong with your brain. <laughs> it, it was like I one was of like, the yeah, you got it. It was one of the derivative diehard things that worked out well because like John McClane's wife Holly Gennaro is always talking shit to Tons Gruber and that's something they pulled over and it worked really well yeah she kind of filled that same role but it was perfect I liked it yeah instead of a wife it was a daughter and I liked that actually mm. that was nice um, and I actually do have one more very quick favorite part at the very this is the very end of the movie this is after Jean-Claude very clearly saves everyone's life in the <laughs> Stanley Cup and the Pittsburgh Penguins chances of winning when the, the, the powers booth tries to escape in a helicopter um, and bad news Jean-Claude's attaches himself takes down the helicopter with a gun <laughs> uh, and there's just a, a crack in this in this dome for the rink and he's on the roof and this helicopter's going down and it takes I'm gonna, I mean this helicopter t- takes a 90 degree angle like perfectly so the nose is straight so the nose skyward is straight up and then it just slowly falls straight down on an absolute perfect line. It looks like um, if you ever use like flash, like if you just tween between two points <laughs> without doing like any variation in the movement. Yeah. I feel like they tried to rationalize it by showing the pilot's hand on the... S- Pull like, back on the stick. Yeah, yeah. on the stick, like all the way back. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's not how helicopters work. Yeah, I don't think they understood that. And then <laughs> it, as it was sinking in, they like, Jean-Claude Van Damme Powers Booth like shared that eye lock where like, I got you. And then there was that amazing top shot like all the action movies do have, that high angle shot of the bad guy falling down. And you can see his little face inside the helicopter. <laughs> He's like, ah, no. Nah. <laughs> I thought and that then was it funny. explodes. And yeah, and then it explodes on the ice. Well, and a great explosion, by oh, the way. Oh, perfect. Uh, yeah. I just hated how it fell in a straight line. Yeah, that like, was so dumb. Gravity would say no to that. <laughs> no, and like it, as far as it looking okay on the picture, it looked okay. I mean, it wasn't like, yeah. it wasn't like bad graphic. It was just like 
that's not how it moves. Like the <laughs> angle of it. Yeah, it was just a little weird. I mean, they did a decent job for 95. Guess, no, no doubt about it. Yeah, but like, like the it, mechanics of it were just like, that's yeah. not what would have happened at all. And even yeah. if it did, punch it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah like, like he would have pulled back on the stick. It would have like crashed into the top of the dome yeah. and then like maybe like lit on fire and like fell through and fallen on the ice. Yeah. Maybe and make exploded. it go into like a tailspin or something. Yeah, like, yeah. I, it never would have just been like, boop. Perfect. Yeah. Boop. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it was like a cartoon boat sinking. Like it just goes... <laughs> ass up and then just sinks straight down (laughs) (laughs) very looney tunes (laughs) and then the movie ended so abruptly yeah and they find the the sun and he's like i never moved and then it's like cut to him in an ambulance the end well no so like i never moved oh my god and then they shove him on the back of an ambulance you see him through the window wide shot of the city and the stadium cut to credits (laughs) no resolution with the wife no resolution with the vice president nope it was no very weird for for the plot being he has to save the vice president no one cared about what happened to the vice president yeah like Only his secret, daughter. The, yeah, the Secret Service was like, hey, the vice president would like to meet you, and then that was it. I just found this movie kind of disappointing for a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie. Having seen like a bunch of his other movies mm-hmm. and like loved them as a kid, I was so looking forward to this, but it just felt a little short for me. Yeah, well, um, I have I have one risk that we, we've already kind of touched upon, but we can uh, put it in the risks column, is that this movie started as a parody script, a mm-hmm. uh, sports parody kind of action thing. Um in the age of tons of parody movies, like we mentioned, Naked Gun, Hot Shots, Robin Hood, Men in Tights, all came out before this. Uh, this movie came out just two years after, I think, the parody spike, and they probably got scared. Yeah. And they changed it, and they were like, well, okay, no, this is what people want now, after Last Action Hero bombed. And I thought that was a pretty big risk, because if they had stuck to their guns and made a parody it movie... It probably would have been awesome. It would have yeah. been awesome. Like, this would have been the definitive parody of Die Hard movies. This would be the Die Hard parody. It would. And we don't really have a Die Hard parody, and that's unfortunate, because I feel like that genre was so well-tread in the early 90s that you could make a great parody of it. But, I mean, you could also say that... It would have been a risk if they had made the parody movie knowing that parody movies were on their way out. Exactly, yeah. I think they were kind of in a lose-lose situation there. Yeah. Any uh, any other risks, Eric? you have one? Um, they put the little girl in a lot of actual serious danger in this movie. Like, three people, like, pull a gun on her and threaten to shoot her. That's true. That's ridiculous. And, like, she's, like, hanging from, like, a grate, like, above the rink. Yeah, like from the dome, like, and she pulls herself. Like, I'm like, this is absolutely John Claude Van Damme's daughter because she pulls herself up, <laughs> yeah. like, from which she saves herself. Yes, <laughs> but I thought that was that was pretty risky. I was like, they're like putting this girl in like legitimate serious fucking danger. Like, yeah, and that's pretty risky for an action movie if you're threatening children. Like, I, I mean, she was probably what eight or nine. Yeah, tops. she's my favorite character. She was awesome. <laughs> yeah, she, no, she really was. She did a like, great job. She was as great as the little boy was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can buy that. <laughs> um, so ratings then. So let's rate it then. Yeah, I'm gonna go. With yeah, I'm gonna you. have to give it an unfortunate fuck off. Oh my god, my fucking father. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Yeah! All right, who wants to start with ratings? Mm, I think I'm good to go. Okay, Eric. Mm, I'll give it a fuck off. All right, I mean, a fuck it was. Off. It was a serviceable '90s action movie, and I think again, I I was sold on a premise. And it delivered on some fronts, but I think the movie in my head was better than the movie that I was given. Because, mm. um, I mean, the, the premise is fucking amazing. A firefighter saves the Stanley Cup from terrorists and the vice president is hostage. That's a pretty fucking good premise. Yeah. <laughs> and there were this obviously didn't fail on the same level. I hate to do this to you, Tom. This didn't fail on the same <laughs> level as the last match. This gave us some pieces of what would have made that movie great. Mm. But this could have like gone the extra step. And if it had remained a parody script... We would have gotten things like, you know, John claude Van Damme skating around the ice with a machine gun, like that kind of thing. I feel like those moments were written into the script and then they backed off from them because they didn't know how to bring it in. Is it a fact that it started as a parody script or is this what we're speculating? I, I think it I think it is fact that the first draft was a parody. But then again, it was IMDb and that is upkept by people that make shit up all the time. So that is true. All right. Um, but also on that note, Eric, so you have rated the last match and this movie on the same plane. Ooh. You Just know what, so that's... you're aware. You, this, this is your ch- time to change your rating for Sudden Death because this movie is very oh, is, clearly better. Oh, this is phen- This is so much better. But you've given that. them the same rating. Yeah, that's. this is where subjective ratings become troublesome because then I get stuck in spots like this. Um, <laughs> I this just is, want to bring that to your attention. Well, it's okay. You can tell someone to fuck off for two different reasons. Yeah, I mean, this is that's kind true. of a, like I, I think fuck off, at least for me, is like a very broad spectrum of ratings 
where like something could be really, really disappointing, but I can say, well, you had a good idea. And this is sort of in the same territory. It's obviously a much better movie. Um, and let's face it, last match was very close to being a fuck you for me. This delivered on some fronts, and I, I, I appreciate that. I feel like these guys had the know-how and the ability to deliver, some, deliver something that would have been better. So maybe that's why I rate them on the same level. But this is obviously a much better movie. You should watch this before you ever watch the last match. If okay. you like 90s action movies, this is absolutely something you should watch. If you find them kind of doofy and stupid, don't bother. Yeah, mm. that's true. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and rate it because uh, I know what I'm going to give this movie. And I'm going to give it, it's a fucking movie. Mm-hmm. It's like what 90s action movies need to have. It has all those things. Um, it has what most Jean-Claude Van Damme movies need to have. They have that. Yep. <laughs> Minus Jean Claude Van Damme kicking ass. <laughs> well, see, he did some ass kicking, but not as much. They had most of it. You know, they they got almost there. In a bubble, uh, outside of Jean Claude Van Damme's other movies, this movie's fine. Yeah. Um, they put Jean Claude in this movie, therefore the expectation is that the movie would be a certain way, and it was not that way. Mm-hmm. So that docked some points so i'm just gonna give it yeah it was a fucking movie and yeah we fucking watched it i mean if this had stallone or bruce willis in it we might have a different opinion about that that is very true this might actually be higher for me if it wasn't john claude van damme because i expect john claude van damme to do john claude van damme things and on that note i think that john claude van damme was the best selection for this movie out of those list of characters yeah for um, sure which is weird to think that i might actually like this movie with more but they made the best decision in picking him yeah um so that's my rating brit what do you got um, I'm gonna go with Eric on this one and give it a fuck off. Pretty much for all the aforementioned reasons. Uh, my mom was like obsessed with Jean Claude Van Damme when I was a kid, <laughs> so I watched so many of his movies, and I always had a great time doing it. So I kind of went into this movie with that mentality, like I can't wait to watch him destroy people, and it just fell short on that front. And considering that that was what I was most excited about, that was a large disappointment for me. Yeah, um, I wouldn't say it's terrible if somebody was going to watch it i'd be like oh that movie was okay um but if somebody asked my opinion i would tell them i would give them like six or seven other van damme movies to watch in its place yeah that's true actually you know what i I, i'm I'm gonna go back i'm gonna rethink my decision here because the way i started saying why i picked this movie is that there's only been like two and a half good diehards and i want to see more diehard and in a way this gave me a far better diehard sequel than most of the diehard sequels so in a way, you know, I think I'm going to I'm, I'm going to step and say this is kind of a fuck. Yes. Um, wow. That's a big leap. Uh, that, that is a, a big pretty leap. big leap, but it's not a fuck. Yeah, but no, I feel like I don't know, like Die Hard 4 was OK. Die Hard 2 is pretty forgettable. One and three are really the only good ones. And if they made a fifth one, it would probably be fucking horrible. <laughs> good um, thing I'm really didn't. glad they did not make a fifth I'm, one. Thank God. Where he was on vacation. Yeah, they, ru- yeah. they would ruin the, mo- the whole franchise the, the if they franchise, did that. Yeah. I mean, it would have been tanked. No one ever makes a good fifth movie. But I feel like, you know, in my head, I can say this is a pretty good fifth Die Hard. Because I, <laughs> I, can, I can put John McClane in this spot where, like, there's a big sporting event and he has to rescue everybody. And they could have integrated it, and it, this would be a good spec script for a Die Hard Five. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I can, I could definitely see that. Um, and with that, final thoughts. No, yeah, let's watch Bloodsport. Yeah, that might be. A... Let's watch Time Cop. Same guy who made it. <laughs> <laughs> or Nowhere to Run. I'll watch any Van Damme movie. Or now. Double Impact. <laughs> oh, I want to watch Hard Target. That's that's <laughs> that's the John Woo. Uh, John claude Van Damme, and I've never seen it. Oh, let's do it. We have all day. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, you've been listening to Second Class Cinema. We watched 1995's Sudden Death, starring John claude Van Damme, in which he saves the Stanley Cup from blowing up <laughs> um, because he's a firefighter and he saves the vice president. That's why. And he was a goalie in college. And he was a goalie in college, and he saves the Pittsburgh Penguins uh, from losing the Stanley Cup. This movie is a mess. <laughs> it's... <laughs> As big of a mess as we are. <laughs> um, if you'd like more information, visit our Facebook, facebook.com slash second class cinema. We are on Twitter. We are on Instagram. Uh, we are Podbean's podcast of the week. One more time. Woo-hoo! That is very cool. Um, so we're very clearly on Podbean. We're on tons of other podcast aggregators and sites. So check us out uh, wherever you feel comfortable looking up. Uh, Imager. Uh, we're also on Imager. We post gifts. So if that's it, that's it, and good night. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday, birthday. Hey, happy birthday to yourself. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs>